I can't stand the conspiracy theory peddler and grifter Lisa Haven, but you know, here she is. Hi everyone, Lisa Haven here. Well, three things are about to radically transform the United States of America as we know it. One of those things is about to happen and two of them are massively underway by the Democratic Party. And if they succeed in these three things, then it will literally turn our country into something akin to a third world country where socialism and communism prevail. Yes, because everybody knows that all third world countries are communist. So this is a major warning. What am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about the passage of three things. House Resolution 1, the election uh, 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 resolution by the Democratic Party, which is also being pushed through via an executive order by Joe Biden. Oh, you mean making sure everybody has access to voting. Yeah, that's such a communist thing. I'm also talking about the $1.9 trillion stimulus bill that is likely to pass here very soon. Yes, I'm sure sure because to you that's probably communism as well right and of course the third thing the equality act yes because adding lgbt and gender into our civil rights legislation is just so horrible it, it's communism everyone but let me dive into why these things are very important and why you need to understand how it can radically transform our country but before i do but before you do it's time for a giant advertisement so let's get into this first article here uh, that really sparked my interest and gave me incentive. Did it really? For today. And this is dailycaller.com. Trilogy of radical policy. Lindsey Graham, Lindsey Graham says three Democrat bills mean that America will not be the nation. That you, that you remember. Remember, and I have to agree with him. And he says this, the, the same three things that I'm saying, and I agree with him 100%. The first one of those things is uh, the $1.9 trillion uh, stimulus bill. The second thing is House Resolution 1. And the third thing is, of course, the Equality Act. But here's what Lindsey Graham says about the first thing here. That is the uh, stimulus plan. And he says this. The senator first attacked the $1.9 trillion COVID stimulus bill that was passed by the Senate on early Saturday. But it's got to go back to the House for another approval there. But here's what he says, quote, they are going to run us over. This is out of control liberalism in this bill. Most of the money's not even spent this year. 90% of it has nothing to do with COVID, Graham said, noting that the legislation will forgive loans for farmers, but only if they're socially disadvantaged if you're an Afri African American or some other minority. But if you're a white person and if you're a white woman, no forgiveness as reparations. What does that got to do with COVID? So if it gives extra help to black farmers, it's no longer COVID relief. That's interesting. Now, I don't think we should be giving people extra help based on their racial or gender demographics. But to claim this isn't COVID relief as a result of this is kind of stupid. Right, but he goes on. Biden's stimulus package offers 1,400 direct payments to Americans earning 75 or less and 2,800 to married couples with combined of 150 or less. There are also 1,400 payments going for each child. Originally, there was the minimum wage, but that was later removed. So what happens as a result if this thing passes, well, of course, it's going to cause us to go more, more uh, trillions and trillions. We're talking hundreds of tri hundred trillion dollars in debt now. Well, we're close to 30 trillion in debt, which is a lot, but it's not 100 trillion. This bill, if put into law, would be about 2 trillion. Again, that doesn't put us into 100 trillion or hundreds of trillions. But people like you don't even want us to work at being able to pay that off. Instead of taxing the rich and the very, very wealthy, their fair share, you're of this mindset we should just keep lowering taxes as if that's going to pay off our debt. Oh, but, but we should just cut all of the programs, you know, cut all of the safety nets, right? You know, pick yourselves up by your bootstraps. That's your motto, right? In the United States of America, we can't afford it. We can't. I, I mean, um, we can't even get a congressional leadership that can balance a budget 
And this thing, after passing all these other packages, now we're having this. Why don't they just open the country and stop all this nonsense? You know, we're finally getting the vaccine distributed more reasonably. But people like you are probably against that, too. You're against doing anything about the pandemic. You're one of these jackasses who probably think it's a plandemic, right? Oh, but Lisa Haven, you're you're such a nice person. You're so nice. See the way you talk about things. And then you say certain words and put pauses when you're reading them because it's important. But either way, the Washington Post wants you to know that you're getting showered with money. I don't know about you, but I don't see any shower of money coming down from the skies. It's a figure of speech, but you knew that already. You're just wanting to grift some more. Right? Biden's stimulus is going to shower money on the American people and sharply cut poverty and favoring individuals over business. Wow. And that time, your pause was because you didn't actually know what you were reading. I just don't see it. Because you didn't understand what it was that you were reading. But since you want to appear live, you didn't want to have any jump cuts, so, you know, you'll just kind of pretend. Here's another assessment that you should see. DailyCaller.com. Senator Toomey digs through the COVID-19 relief bill and says he found tens of billions of dollars in un- Necessary spending that again on that unnecessary spending has nothing to do with the pandemic. Well, unfortunately, our government is kind of broken. There seems to be no way but trying to insert things into a bill in order to get important things passed. Things that, yeah, we should be able to be bipartisan about, but isn't going to happen. So the Democrats, when they introduce a bill, insert a bunch of things into it. And the Republicans insert a bunch of things into a bill that, you know, they wouldn't be able to pass on their own either. How about how the Republic, I can't remember what his name was, but he wanted to make it, he wanted to side with the RIAA and the MPAA to make it so if people stream content that's copyrighted, they could actually see jail or prison time. That's what your side tried to shove into things. So, I mean, now, maybe we could both agree that, yeah, this isn't the way the government should function. Why are the Democrats always sneaking stuff in to bills and legislation, right? Why? And as I just said, why do Republicans do the same thing? Hmm, why? Well, we should probably be working at fixing this, but nobody's going to be fixing this. But you can't just pretend that this is something that just the left does. And it's a question that really needs to be answered that isn't getting addressed. But this is a radical transformation of our country, because if you crash us economically, all the other things will tumble and fall. We're almost 30 trillion in debt, and this would add 2 trillion to that. Okay, this, this isn't the straw that broke the camel's back. Now, again, people like you don't even think we should be doing anything to try to pay that debt off. You think we should just be cutting programs and, you know, cutting regulations and, and cutting everything as if that's going to work. Yeah, libertarianism doesn't work. You know, we our country started off that way and we eventually became something with lots of regulations and such because we learned that you can't just let the market take care of the problems because it doesn't and now they want forever checks for people for who knows how long we don't know exactly how long but it's certainly not going to be forever but you're not very bright are you though that's called socialism that's called universal basic income and it never works folks would universal basic income be something that would work on a permanent level? I don't know. It would depend on how the rest of the economy is doing. But universal basic income, you know, during this pandemic seems to be working fine for the countries that are implementing it. But don't let the facts get in your way. It never works. And, and let me tell you this story because I think it's important. My dad growing up, for those of you who, who hadn't heard, he had a really big heart because he hit rock bottom, right? My dad was, was homeless for a time. He moved to Texas without knowing anybody. We grew up in Texas and he had nothing, not a dollar to his name. He had to try to get a job, right? And, and uh, you know, just to, but he didn't have an address right for that job but finally somebody gave him a job but he knows what it's like to hit bottom and we were at the bottom I was very poor and even though we were poor in our single wide trailer my parents 
brought in homeless people to stay with us. They lived with us. My parents got them a job, made sure that they got hired somewhere, got them a, 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 a shelter over their head, gave them food, shared our living quarters. All the ones that we did that with quit their jobs, left and said, I don't, I don't, wanna, I, I don't wanna work, I just want a handout. Now, obviously that is not the case with all of them, but it gives you an idea of what happens under socialism. If I'm giving, giving free handouts, why would I be incentivized to work? If I'm getting it for free, why would I work? Um, this isn't a permanent thing. People are pushing for this during the pandemic and people need help. They do need help. And I mean, if, let's go with your argument here though, okay? Why would people work? Well, to buy things that go beyond people's basic necessities. You know, they want nice things. They'll have to work for it. But, I mean, what's being promoted isn't actual socialism, okay? No, no one is pushing to replace the means of production, the ownership of the means of production, with public ownership. People aren't pushing for that. That's what socialism is. Same kind of thing in a very bland way. Obviously, there's a lot more to it. But this is the idea of what's happening with the Democrats, and they know it destroys country. Again, this is during the pandemic, okay? Most people want to get back to work, okay? Most people want things to get back to normal. But people like you make that hard. But that destroys countries. But the second thing here that could destroy our country, if this thing passes, and I don't foresee it necessarily passing the Senate, don't see it passing that. That's why now there's an executive order by Biden. But House Resolution 1, this is making our election system again to that of a third world country and literally federalizing it. Because trying to give more people the right to vote is communism, don't you know? We cannot put that much power in the hands of the federal government. This is what our founders warned of. Exactly what it warned of. And here it is, Breitbart.com. And I'm going to kind of briefly go over these because I think a lot of you are already aware, well aware of what's in this thing. But 37 things to know about House Resolution for the people. It's not for the people, folks. It's for the government. It's for the elite. It's for the ruling class. We don't have no benefit except for... They get the power now and take it from the states. States don't really have the power anymore. It's a federalized election, right? Here's just a, a few of the key points. Federal control over congressional elections. Bombshell. Funny, I didn't see people like you complaining when the Trump administration was promoting the idea of canceling the last election and having another one run by the military. Hmm, you were silent then. I wonder why. Number two, declaring that states and localities have eroded access to the right to vote. Well, I mean, Republicans have tried to erode access to voting. I mean, not everyone can easily get access to an ID card like you're wanting. You want a photo ID? Well, are you going to supply it to them for free? Or, you know, someone should have to make a certain amount of money to vote. Should someone have to have a... Should someone have to be living in an actual home or an apartment to vote? If someone's homeless, should they not get to vote? I mean, you know, you obviously, being that you're quoting this, you probably have a problem with the notion of felons voting too. You know, you think a whole bunch of people shouldn't have the right to vote. Restricting challenges to HR1, to the federal court system. Can't really challenge that as a state, right? Automatic online voter Registration, automatic and online voter registration, wow. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with more people being registered to vote? What's the problem? Protection for illegal aliens who are registered to vote. Did you even read what you're quoting? It says, the bill protects non-citizens from prosecution if they are registered to vote automatically and never made an affirmative declaration that they were U.S. citizens. Agencies that register voters are not required to keep records of who declined to affirm their citizenship. Did you, did you even read it or do you just read headlines and you just make these huge videos based off of headlines? Now... You read Breitbart and think Breitbart's a, a really great source for news. So what can I expect? Changing personal information, same day voter registration, preventing states. And that's that could cause so many issues, by the way. We're not living in the 1800s. We're not in the 1700s. We're not in the 1900s anymore either. OK, we're in the 2000s. And in the 2000s, we have technology and we have databases. 
You know, things are different than they were. Preventing states from purging ineligible voters from rolls. You know, like uh, maybe they move to another state or something like that. They shouldn't be on the voting record if you switch states. I mean, all this corruption, which makes it nearly impossible to ever expose any corruption. Look, I'm not saying that this is all good stuff, okay? But she's blowing this up to be some insane thing. And, and again, she's pushing this notion, oh, look, look out, everyone, communism. It's just like, come on, give it a rest. Registration for minors under 18, prohibiting the publication of misleading information. Are you all right with giving people false information about the elections and how to vote and all of that? Are you okay with that? Are you going to take the notion of, well, you know, if they're stupid enough to believe it, then then who cares? <laughs> or what? Reducing prison funds to states unless they register ex-convict. Mandatory early voting. Nationwide vote by mail without, of course, voter ID. You just have to show it. Mail-in voting has worked fine here in Washington state for many, many years now. For everything, and this is a big one. Ballot harvesting. Hey, just send the activists to that nursing home and let them fill out the ballot over and over and over again. <laughs> I don't know, it sounds to me like you're just scared of letting everyone vote. Yeah, yep. Allowing 10 days for ballots to be accepted for election day, paying for postage, for mailed ballots, and on and on and on it goes, gutting, gutting photo ID requirements altogether, right? 45 days, making absentee voter boxes available for 40 di 45 days. Oh, the horror! But since this is not likely to, to pass the Senate, right? What did they do? Well, Joe Biden issues an executive order Right? So here we have Fox News. Biden signs voter registration executive order as he pushes Senate to pass sweeping House one bill. So he's saying, hey, pass the bill. But in the meantime, I'll just put forth this little piece of executive order. And what does this executive order do? This is on Breitbart.com. Of course it's from Breitbart or Summit News or Zero Hedge. Joe Biden's EO on voting tells agencies to push vote by mail to combat misinformation. Why is that funny? And here's some of the thing it, it, his uh, executive order is trying to push. Uh, using federal agencies to promote voter registration. Your big daddy becomes the federal government. Using federal agencies to inform Americans about voting. Don't you know? You need to know how to vote. We've only been doing it for, I don't know, 100 years. Do we vote the same way as we did 100 years ago, you stupid We've been voting for hundreds of years, but hey, now the Biden administration wants to educate the American people on how to freaking vote, you know, because you have to be told how to fill out the ballot and how to, because, you know, we don't already have little information sheets, you know, to tell you how you need to stand in line and wait, and then how to open the door to get into the voting booth. No, that's not what people need help with, but go ahead and keep being condescending. I'm sure it'll help rally your base. You know, because you, the American people, are so dumb got the Amer that Biden has to tell you how to vote. As I mentioned earlier, there are things that have changed about the way that we vote. Here in Washington state, as I said already, we've been vote by mail only for many, many years. Excuse me? We've been doing this for a hundred years. We don't need nobody to tell us how to vote. Well, you know, reality and statistics say otherwise. But who cares about those statistics? They only matter when it's something that promotes something you believe in, right? Stupidity, right? I'm insulted by that. I am so sorry I'm insulted. You should be insulted. I'm not insulted by that. You just get your panties in a twist really easily. It to tell people how to vote. Linking federal agency websites. Wait, what? Let's have federal in charge and link to these voter registration websites so we can have all the access in the world, right? Voter registration, vote by mail applications using approved nonpartisan third party organizations. Not like there's any corruption that could happen there, wink, wink. Using identification documents issued by the agency to help people register to vote uh, and on and on giving public employees time off and promoting voter, voter registration for federal prisoners. So you're just against all of that by default, right? Well, that's because, you know, you probably know that the more people 
that are registered to vote, the more people who actually vote, the more likely it is that Republicans will lose. What you can't do at Congress, you know, what Congress can't do, let's just put through via an executive order. And this is what leads to making us a third world country. No, no, it doesn't. Making it so more people can vote does not turn us into a third world country, you stupid or a voting system akin to that of a third world country. So I'm going to show you this Gateway Pundit article. That's what happens in socialist countries, says former DNI John Ratcliffe, who comes clean to discuss last minute Democrat rule change that corrupted the 2020 election. All these rules and changes that they make, right? That's just... Yep, you're still pushing the conspiracy theory that the election was stolen. All craziness. Let's just pass rules and regulations last minute to make them acceptable for the election, right? This is the kind of stuff that happens in socialist country, folks. You don't appear to even know what socialism is. And the kind of laws that they're wanting to put forward right now with House Resolution 1 and, and Biden's executive order are akin to that of third world countries and what happens. No, you're just really unintelligent. Third point here, the third point here that can radically transform the United States of America, and I'm talking about religious freedoms. The, the first one, the trillion dollar spending bill is going to devastate us economically, put us in economic hell. The second one, was the election radically transform our elections to that to something akin to a third world country. And the third one here is radically going to transform our religious freedoms. You know, I can remember when religious zealots in the early 90s were trying to pass things like Measure 9 in Oregon. I forgot what the number was on the measure here in Washington state that was basically the same thing. But, you know, religious people for decades have tried to get special rights to discriminate that nobody else has. You want special rights, okay? If you open a business and your business is open to the public, it is open to the public, not just people you agree with, okay? You don't get to, your business doesn't get to discriminate against LGBT as employees or as customers. If you want to have that kind of discrimination, don't open your your business to the public. It's pretty easy. But no, you're going to still try to argue for special rights, and it's pathetic. Okay? There's nothing wrong with adding LGBT and gender as things that uh, you can't discriminate against under, under our civil rights legislations. Okay? There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing that's going to turn us into a communistic country just because you can't discriminate against gay people. Our religious freedoms are at stake with House, with this new Equality Act. Here's what's in the Equality Act, and this is on dailycaller.com. And one of the biggest things that I think should be really hit home, right, is the fact that in this act, males can compete in women's sports. In other words, women are never, ever going to be able to win in sports again because we just don't compare. You know, when it comes to biological males competing in women's sports, I'm not going to touch that with a 10-foot pole. It's just part of that makeup, right? But the other thing here, and I think powerful point here, is forcing a belief on a religious organization right? Whether it's Christian or Muslim or Catholic or Jewish or whatever it is, this is radically transforming the churches to comply a certain way. And it is a direct attack. Nobody's forcing any church to do anything. What are you talking about? On religious freedoms, which is why, right? Lindsey Graham was warning against this. And here's what he had to say at the very bottom of this article. The senator also took aim at the Equality Act, which he says doesn't get enough attention. They passed a bill that does away with the distinction between man and woman in law. Biological boys will start playing in girls sports. And if you're a religious organization out there and your faith dictates that certain things happen, this bill takes that ability to say no away from you. It's literally reshaping America. I never knew religious organizations were big into sports. Who knew? 
And that's his assessment on that. On that, shh, shh, no squeaking. The radical transformation of the United States of America is, or it has, begun. Good. I mean, we saw the radical transformation of our country under COVID, how stores started closing, businesses started closing to the doors, Every our economy, it sent us into a depression. We have our kids committing suicide at unheard of rates. We have. Well, I mean, if we would have had leadership that actually cares about science and we would have handled the coronavirus situation better than we did, we might not be in this situation. You know, this situation is awful crime exploding all across the country because, hey, if you're Antifa and BLM, it's promoted, accepted, put out there. Go ahead. Do what you want. Look, I agree. There have been double standards in media when it comes to the rioting. Absolutely. The only people who suffer here are not those in Congress, folks. It's you and I, the American people. You and I, the American people. So the radical transformation of our country has begun. And we need to be aware of it. Anyhow, with that, please. Ah, yes. Please buy some shit that she's peddling. No, no, please don't. Anyway, I don't know what more to say now, but uh, thanks for watching.